Welcome to Comic Power. I'm your host, Comic Killer 72 The show we're going to be doing today is called Let's Argue. That's going to be self-explanatory. I'm going to make a declaration about a position about something comic book related, and you can argue in the comment section about if you agree or if you disagree. And my position is that Infinity War is better than Endgame. Instead of a traditional video, this is going to be like a podcast, so it's going to be audio only. I encourage spirited debate in the comment section, but please remember this is a PG-13 YouTube channel. So number one, threats of violence will not be tolerated. Number two, limited bullying is allowed. So if you think someone's position is stupid or if you think they're an idiot, please call them an idiot. But please no put downs based on race, gender, national origin, or sexual orientation, stuff like that. And by the way, if you start a comment, stick to one comment thread you can do multiple unlimited replies to other comments as well as unlimited replies to your own thread. But please, no multiple comment threads. Okay, we got that out the way, so let's go ahead and get to the meat of the matter. Endgame is a very good movie. I give it four stars. But Infinity War is a great movie. This downright iconic. I give it five stars. In Infinity War, we are witnessing the triumph of the mad titan Thanos. It's basically a Shakespearean tragedy. The MCU established Thanos as such a formidable opponent that they gave him six years of teases before they gave him his first full appearance, which is Infinity War. So this is just a epic. In every film leading up to Infinity War, our heroes always had some type of obstacle they had to come over, but eventually at the end they wound up winning. But in Infinity War, they lose in the beginning, they lose in the middle, and they lose in the end. Think about it, in Infinity War, in the first 10 minutes of the movie, we get the death of a major character in Loki, and the Avengers' strongest character, the Hulk, literally gets beat up and manhandled very easily by the enemy. It establishes the tone of the onslaught of just how big this bad is in Thanos. I made a video about how overwhelmingly popular this character became from virtually unknown outside of comic book geeks to becoming the biggest known popular science fiction character since Darth Vader. I made a video about that. See the link in the script. He exerts his evil plan with such charisma that there are some movie fans that actually believe that Thanos was right in his goals. I believe those people are insane because mass genocide is not heroic. In real life, people like Hitler and Stalin did that and they weren't the nicest guys in the world and they're not remembered fondly. But the fact that some people could root for Thanos, this shows how good of an execution that Marvel was able to do with this character in live action. Well, motion capture anyway. To me, watching Infinity War is like watching Empire Strikes Back in Star Wars. The Rebels made a lot of gains in part one of New Hope, but in Empire, they get their ass handed to them. The Empire Strikes Back is lauded by most critics as the best Star Wars movie of all time, and I think there's a correlation between that and Infinity War, which could be the best Avengers movie of all time, well, so far. Anyway. That brings us to Endgame. The theme of this is recovery, redemption, and final victory. It was entertaining as all get out. It did not feel like it was a three hour movie. The movie was basically grief counseling in terms of what do you do after tragedy? Do you not accept it and you're stuck in the moment and you blame yourself? That's what Thor did. He turns his self-pity into letting himself go and he gets all out of shape. Or do you not accept it and you lash out in the case of Hawkeye who becomes a assassin. So Thor was hurting himself but Hawkeye is hurting other people when he dons the persona of Ronin. Some of the characters have accepted it and moved on so Iron Man and the Hulk fit into this category. Do you not accept it and find a way to fix it? That's basically where Captain America and Black Widow are. So this is what the movie was really great at doing by giving closure to all of the founding Avengers. If you go back and watch it, basically 95% of the movie is about those founders. The non-dusted non-founders such as Rocket Raccoon and Captain Marvel had very limited roles which made sense for this film. Ant-Man had to be given a big role because he had to explain how the microverse works. And Nebula's role was pretty big because she's so connected to the main villain in the movie that she has to have a lot of screen time. There's some real epic scenes in this movie, such as Captain America showing that he's worthy to use Thor's hammer, the return of the dusted heroes one by one, of course, the nano gauntlet that Tony Stark has, and he says, I am Iron Man, and saves the day. But at the end of the day, you're using time travel as a plot device. Anytime you get into time travel, it gets ridiculous really fast, no matter what movie. For example, in Back to the Future, where Marty goes back in time to 1955 and interacts with his parents when they were teenagers at the time, using the name Calvin Klein. But when he goes back to the present, 
Why don't his parents who interacted with Calvin Klein notice that their son looks just like Calvin Klein from 1955? That doesn't make any sense. Seriously, he played lead guitar at the dance. Don't you think there would be photos of that in the yearbook? And in the case of Endgame, they break their own rules very, very quickly. For example, Gamora gets sacrificed by Thanos for the Soul Stone in Infinity War. She's supposed to be dead. That's it. But, of course, they can't kill the character because they need her for more Guardians of the Galaxy sequels. So, in Endgame, Black Widow sacrifices herself for the Soul Stone. And she's supposed to be dead. So, with some microverse tinkering, we were able to get back to the 2014 Gamora, who's still supposedly alive now in 2023, but Black Widow's supposed to be dead. So, Gamora gets sacrificed for the Soul Stone. She still finds a way to be alive in the future timeline, but Black Widow gets sacrificed for the Soul Stone, and she's supposed to be dead for real. That doesn't make any sense. So using time travel to such a degree as this, I think hurts the movie a little bit. But in saying that, the movie's still very, very good. It's entertaining. So to me, this is sort of like Return of the Jedi, where our heroes suffered a loss in the previous movie, but came back and won the day in this one. So let's argue. Infinity War, I believe it is a five-star movie, absolutely epic and iconic, and it's a better film than Endgame, which, while very good, gets into the ridiculousness of time travel. We get some very epic scenes, and we get closure for the founding Avengers, but Endgame is just not even close to being as good as Infinity War. So, sound off in the comment section. Is it Endgame, or is it Infinity War? Which one is better? Speak up and let your voice be heard in the comment section. This is Comic Killer 72 signing out for Comic Power and saying bye bye.